What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Childish. We are back at it again with yet another episode of Educate and Dominate, that one-on-one interview series where we take some of the top names in the game and get their insights so we can bring your game to the next level. My next guest is one that we've had uh, back in the day, uh, episode number 20. We got ourselves returning Guardian 3 player from the Proc Ready Gaming community, 409. 40, how are we doing, sir? Hi, Childish. <laughs> What's going on, man? How are you doing? I, I, see, I see Childish. <laughs> nice nice so yeah uh as you guys can see we are incorporating something new something fresh something innovative and it's funny that uh four was the one that kind of introduced it to us he wanted us to get some of that video action for you guys today and so my goal is not to fail on the camera while we're doing this interview the peoples need to see us in our uh, weekday pjs definitely right? definitely yeah, yeah. so uh, for those that are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Um, if you haven't checked out Foro's uh, uh, Educate and Dominate episode 20, make sure you uh, hit it up. I will go ahead and put a link in the description down below if you haven't, so you can check that out. Pause this video and then bring it back so we can uh, come back with you guys so you guys can see part two. So um, the introduction on that one is there uh, from the original one. Um, but we'll, what we'll go ahead and do for this one, kind of start now, is uh, talk about the progression of your channel. Uh, for without a doubt, you're you're one of the biggest growing um, channels out there. When we did our first video, uh, we had ourselves um, just under, I think, 500 subscribers. And you know, fast forward uh, four months from now, you are sitting at just under, I think, 5,700 subscribers. Uh, congratulations to you, sir. Man, man, crush Monday. There but it what, is. What what is up? Like, yeah, it's it, it's all it's all because of you. Actually, actually, I can't take the I can't take the credit. It's all because of these subscribers that are watching. So shout out to all you guys that are watching. Uh, we did put out that man crush money. I think within like a week or something like that, he was up to like twelve hundred subscribers. So yeah, I was like, oh well, why did I wake up with a thousand extra hey. subscribers? Oh, oh, childish made this video. Oh, yeah, okay. that's, that's it was awesome. it was crazy. It was awesome, <laughs> and there's there was no like I said, the 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 community uh -huh. out there is second to none. What what a supportive group. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Uh, quite the amazing thing. So um, let me see here. So I guess the biggest question I want to have for you is we have a lot of people now starting to come out. Um, they saw the recent video on, uh, or actually the recent update for um, Com to us and, and, and starting to incorporate um, some of the YouTubers and streamers and their social media. You know, they now have the, the option to see, uh, to see the guys. So actually, why don't we go ahead and do that right now so we can show people, you know, how it all works. The uh, super you, hot. Super hot um, social media, right? Social so we, media button. We got the social media button, and then if you go to this, if you click one of these two, you can go check out um, either one of the the categories, and you will start to see some of the YouTubers and the streamers' video content out there. So, um, you know, I guess one of the biggest things uh, to talk about is, you know, when you're making the videos or whatnot, you know, creating something that you know the people are going to enjoy. Um, I guess my thing, my my first question to ask you is. Uh, for the up-and-coming YouTubers and streamers that are going to now try to um, provide content for the community, what would be your biggest uh, recommendation for them to try to grow, um, and why? Um, show show the people that you're the how much fun you're having. Um, you know, like people are going to want to hang out with you and watch what you're doing if it's fun. Um, one one of the one of the greatest things I learned this one time I made a video. This is this is my, probably like one of my biggest epic fail moments. I made a video, and I wasn't having very much fun, and I was like, "Gosh darn it, this is not fun." And 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 I uploaded it, and I got a, I got a lot of really great response from people that were like, "We don't want to watch this if you're not having fun." And then it just it was like a an epiphany moment, and and it was like, "Oh yeah." We got to do fun stuff and we got to have fun. Right. Um, so, I mean, the number one thing would be to make sure you make sure you're having fun and you're, you're letting everybody know that's watching you, how much fun you're having. Mm -hmm. the, definitely doing what you love to do, not pretending uh, the way how I act on the camera, the way how we both act on camera is no different than we would do off camera. I fail just as much off the camera as I do uh, in yeah. the camera. So this is real. Um, actually, we got we got yeah we got we got some epic fails for you today. Let me tell you <laughs> something. Oh man! And ink, yeah, and vinegar. Ink and vinegar. Th those are the only sneak peeks that you're getting. Okay, <laughs> those are the only sneak peeks that you're getting. But um, so you know, talking about some of the um, 
video, some of the things that you've been doing to really, you know, change the game, change for the players that are coming up. Um, I'd have to say two of the biggest ones, uh, biggest uh, video groups uh, or video, like the video series that you've been doing was the Saturday Speed Kill Arena and then your top 100 uh, guardian defenses, probably the ones that blew it up the best. So um, can you talk a little bit about those? What do you, you know, do in those videos and then, you know, how, how, how they kind of grew? Um, so, but I've always applied a philosophy to if I'm doing a recording or something for YouTube. Um, I got to be having fun and I have to be doing something that's semi insightful to people, right? Like, why do they want to watch this? Okay. And the, the Saturday speed kill and the, the top level arena defenses at the time, I thought to myself, well, hey, maybe people want to watch me try to just blow up and, you know, entire arena defenses so that they can learn how to do it, you know, and they can design a team to do it. Um, or maybe they want to see me pick out my favorite defenses on a Sunday and talk about why I think they're awesome and fight them because maybe some people out there don't get the chance to encounter those top 10 guys, right? Maybe those top 10 guys don't show up on their list and they don't really get to see them in action. Sure. Um, and I just thought that people might want to see that. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of people doing it. And so uh, I did it and, and it was a lot of fun for me and it, uh, it hit it over pretty well. Um, pe people enjoyed it because you really, you know, you, you, could, you could come to the Brock Ready Gaming channel and get to see, like, you know, what the high-end guys were up to. Yeah, it was pretty darn cool. And then, of course, we cannot forget your Necropolis B10 series. I believe you have a couple of videos within that series that each video reached anywhere from 40 to about 70,000 views. I think I think that first one might even get close to 100,000, no? Yeah, that, that video was, uh, I, it, you know, sometimes they show up on, like, YouTube suggested things, and then they just kind of go crazy. Um, but, yeah, there there was, when, when Necropolis came out, I kind of, devoted a lot of time into trying to figure it out and then figure out, okay, how can I, how can I share what I have learned with the people to where it makes sense for them and they can do what they want to with it, you know? Right. Uh, but at the same time, it's entertaining, you know, let me, let me put together a, an auto team and play some music and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was new, it was hot stuff. It had, it had the, the, the new download that people needed to know to, to understand the place. And it, it, right. it, those types of things where you do something that uh, is fun and, you know, that somebody will pick up on and learn something with, it, it goes over really well. Um, so, yeah, the, the advice to the, to the media peoples is have fun and, uh, you know, try to, try to maybe every now and then look to, look to do something new and neato. Right, be be that be that first guy that uses that Nat two monster to like wreck face. It's funny that you say talking about being new and needle and whatnot. Um, you know, moving in our to, to our next topic, we're going to be talking about some of the units that you know generally um, you know you might have heard about or people might have heard about that they don't they don't always play around. And I just got done showcasing the app tonight, the Fire Undine. I was one of the many people that got an opportunity to see your uh, stream uh, last Sunday. Uh, of course, this is going to be like two Sundays ago for the people that are watching now. And uh, I was pretty uh, pretty impressed, to say the least. The uh, Fire Undyne, I've had this one for quite some time. Um, and, you know, I just haven't been able to, you know, figure out a way to use it. But you definitely, um, you know, turned something, uh, turned something out of nothing in this particular one. you got a nice little set going on here. So kind of talk about um, your particular setup on this one and, and how you've incorporated it in your, into your arena meta there. Um, I'm... I'm building, it's still a work in progress, but I'm building sort of a, uh, a team to auto counter, like, like easy mode counter all those, uh, crazy, um, YOLO arena defenses that revolve around, uh, Sierra, the wind Oracle and Zyros and Bernard and like stuff that I'm, I'm going to be challenged to outspeed, um, just like I did back in the day, like, okay, I'll, it all starts with the story. Back in the day, I wanted to excel in arena. Right. And I, I, you couldn't beat speed teams. And so how, how did I beat speed teams? Well, I got, 
I got, I got wheel runes and and I made anti speed teams to to not outspeed them because there's no way I was going to get to that level of progression, but to counter them with right. like immunity and stuff like that. And so it's kind of like what I did back in the day when I was trying to counter speed teams is uh, I want to build something that allows me to counter very easily some of those uh, very common arena defenses that you see and. Um, Sierra leader with with like speed attack bar booster and some other crazy blow up guys Th- these crazy blow up teams with no healers that are really really good that can be very dangerous um I want to build a counter for them and so I I have Atsunai and uh she she is going hand in hand with some uh with some fire mummies that that I'm tweaking and and working on to Go up against some of those like Sierra, Zyros, Bernard, Ultra Speed, reset you, bomb you, strip off all your buffs, sort of comp. Right. Yeah. Uh, the uh, definitely, definitely a strong um, composition. You know, it's funny. I, I think I, I'd have to. I think I made the comment last time. Uh, you know, you are the definition of what it means to utilize. You know, uh, everything and anything you got. It's not about what you got, but what you make of what you got. And uh, taking a look at that tonight a little bit closer, you know, a lot of people, uh, when we think about certain particular, you know, tanks or whatnot, we, we feel that we have to get as much HP as possible, when in all reality, um, every so often we get ourselves a nice handful of uh, runes that, are, that have based on defense. And you see time and time and again, people just kind of throwing these on the sidelines um, and, and are definitely undervaluing the, the, the ability of, of uh, uh, defense. So can you kind of talk about the defensive stat like in general and, and why this not should be taken for granted? Well, it's well, an easy way to put it would be you're going to get more overall, you're going to get more mitigation. You're going to get more survivability out of an extra defense rune if you can spare it. Um, now, there's going to be a couple of exceptions to those, like if your defense broken, but if you if you want to. I mean, just quite frankly, what makes a monster tankier? Two, two slots of uh, HP runes or a slot of HP rune and a slot of defense rune? For, for any monster that has a good high base defense, and if you look at Atenai's base defense, her base defense is pretty good. Yeah, actually, um, it's not too bad at all. You, you put a defense rune on them, and they're going to get more mitigation from it than like from an extra HP rune. Right? You're, you're going you're gonna to get a little more survivability. And... Um, if that defense rune is has a really good speed sub, I'm gonna use it, right? Um, so yeah, I put like speed defense uh, HP on her, I believe, yep. or yep. and and I went with defense on the slot four because I want that speed sub. She's she's amazing in, in a TOA. I was goofing around with her, like you know, I already cleared TOA, but sometimes I go back in there and like you know, fool around with different teams. Sure. And uh, oh my goodness, she's she's boss. Um, especially for, she she works out great for a lot of those floors that are tough for people. You know, like the uh, Artemo and all the light yetis and um, the the Leo levels. Because uh, she stuns like a madman with her AOE spell, and she's got two heals that come up quite often. Um, I don't. She dots stuff without you know. You you don't really need to give her high crit rate and high accuracy. She's going to land three turn dots. Mm-hmm. Um, just an overall useful monster, and I I put runes on her lately so that I could play with her in TOA and use her with those mummies. Yeah, that is cool. I'm I'm actually I was thinking about some of the boss sages that I, I wouldn't have been able to clear if I didn't have you know a, a wide variety of units that incorporate a lot of dots or whatnot. So it is kind of cool to see that in addition to having the ability to stun since you're using the despair set. So pretty darn strong, pretty darn strong. Uh, let me see here. I know there was another unit that I wanted to hit up here. Uh, I think one of them is going to have to be the fire, or sorry, what was it? The uh, fire mummy. Yeah, the one's right up here. So um, you definitely played around with this a little bit in your stream. So can you kind of talk about this right now and how you're incorporated it in, in, in the setup? You, you stick them against uh, arena defenses that have... Um, that don't that don't really have good healers, and sometimes they work even in in arena defense that has one healer because they they can heal block they can AOE heal block, and then, well, 
Theomaris and and Lucian and Zyros and Sierra, they generally over time will just kill themselves on the mummies, and as long as they stay alive, the team dies. And so you, if you see like this crazy Lucian speed comp, like say say it's a uh, Verd Lucian, uh, Tyrone, um. Some some crazy speed comp built around like Lucian and Zyros or Lucian and Theomars. And you're not going to outspeed them. You're not going to get immunity up before they blow you up. Maybe they have a buff remover and they're going to take off your will runes. Well, you just throw a couple of fire mummies in there and keep, you know, give them, give them one heal or maybe two heals and the team will just kill themselves on the fire mummies. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to see some more of it. They they definitely need some tweaking. I'm still going to read. Re, I uh, have a lot of rune work to do on them. Um, I think I'm going to end up trying out vampire on them. I, I guess I'm thinking that's going to be like a, a a cool way to test and see if the the vampire uh, works on their passive. But uh, so far, I'm loving them. They're they're a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm. You have to tell me how it goes with the vampire. Um, what was it? The Latest and greatest uh, stream that you also put on, you recently tried out um, playing around with Orochi. And it's funny because a lot of people have this particular unit, have played around with them for Giants B10, but they use them in a format that doesn't really um, allow Orochi to shine when, when, when specking him for you know outright damage versus you know a ton of critical rate and whatnot. And of course, as you've uh, put it plainly, you know doing what you got to do to get the runes you need to get, um, setting them up so that you can uh, get the most out of them. Um, has allowed you to really, uh, you know, bring out the absurd amount of damage that this, you know, particular unit do. People don't know how strong some of these damage modifiers are until you actually ruin them up well and, and test them out. So, can you talk a little bit about um, how you've been using this one recently and, and and what's your, you know, take on this particular unit? Um. Well, it it started with building the sets. Um, I'm I'm the type of person that. Half the t- half the time I make rune sets, I I make the set first, and then I'll go put it on a monster, um, like like design the rune set and then go and then go put it somewhere, and um, so I've been farming giants a lot lately to try to improve uh, speed runes, and so I came across, you know, some nifty swift runes and blade runes that gave really good crit rate and crit damage, um, and. I've always wanted to play around with Orochi because he can speed up Bernard, right? He's he's a semi-obtainable answer to the Vanessa leader skills because he's almost as good as Vanessa in terms of speed leader skills. Um, and so, yeah, we we I've fooled around with him uh, for the first time in last Sunday's stream. And since then, I've kind of been messing around a little bit with him. Um and I can see a lot of potential. I I bet you Burke often he, he doesn't show this, but I bet you Burke 420 often runs um Orochi Bernard double Lucian. Hmm. Um and because he's got an Orochi that's ruined like you know high crit damage like that similarly and he's using him he's using him to increase the speed of his bernards so he can make sure his bernards and his lucians can get a jump on like chloe's and stuff right um and you know looking at him he does massive amount of damage he he really does uh, especially if he's ruined that way um i you you showed me on you were watching the stream where like i just you know just like erased a praha and a veramos like before the yep. team even moved uh he he does he does a massive amount of damage but but think about it just in terms of he, he gives you the opportunity to use a bernard based speed team whether it's like um orochi bernard double lucian or uh orochi bernard whatever other win guys you want to try to just you know sheerly outspeed the opponent and um i've been fooling around with uh with him a little bit like running him with some of my wind guys along with bernard um and they're they're capable of some pretty pretty fun stuff yeah. and so i i think i'm going to hold on to him he's going to stay ruined that way and i'm going to continue to tweak my other wind guys and use him and bernard together to be the foundation of like a wind speed comp yep. because there's a lot of like um Prahas in the arena nowadays that are just begging to get one shot 
before their team. <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a lot of there's a lot of Guild Wars teams out there with you know cute little compositions that are uh, that are begging to get one shot in there. Like if, if if a particular unit in their team gets one shot, like there's nothing they can do to come back. So yeah, I mean, can, can you think of that the, in the Guild battle, right? Like, say I'm I'm doing Guild battle and I take Orochi, Bernard, and that that wind that wind pirate that you see right there. Yep. Right, and nobody's going to outspeed me because my Bernard's backed up by extra speed leader, right? Um. And then, and then the, the Wind Pirate's going to go, and he's going to knock back somebody's attack bar and put Armor Break. And then Orochi's going to do Storm and Gale. And I don't care if you're Retesh and you have 55,000 hit points, that's, you're, 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 you're going to die. It's yeah. over. That Storm and Gale does like, on the Armor Broken Target, it does like 6, 7K, 6 times. It just, it just right. obliterates stuff. Right. And, that, um, and that's only the damage, right? That's not even counting the continuous That's damage. not the dots, yeah. That's not even <laughs> counting the dots. So, like I said, so it's funny that we, we just got done watching it. Like, um, I'm, I've been trying to think of different um, units to try to play around with. Uh, recently, I picked up Galleon. And so, uh, and, and um, you know, like most people out there after, um, you know, a lot of, you know, the, the bomber recent video and, and talking about the, the, you know, how Bernard's is not respected. You know, a lot of us are now working on a Bernard's trying to make it beast mode. And, uh I definitely feel that uh, Orochi is another one of those great units that you can combine with a with a Galleon Bernard or a Bernard Megan or whatever, and 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 and, and get yourself an additional unit for that Yolo team or whatnot. I feel that uh, it definitely can play a good a good role in it. I was sitting there going back and forth if I wanted to do Orochi or Tanya. Um, I had I just recently pulled the Wind Assassin as well, yeah. but I already had I already had Orochi five star Awaken, so I'm hoping to use him. More and I feel like I can find more value in um, his second skill in addition to his third skill. The attack bar reduction um, is something that again people don't utilize enough. So that second uh, skill hits like a ton of bricks. And too. It, yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's so it hits really hard too. So like I said, it's it's kind of one of those units where it's it's nice that you you know put it out there and and and, and show people it because again it's it just reminds you that even some of these these Orochis and these Julies that people thought were like two thousand and late, you know still you know, play an important role in the game today. It just depends on the synergy of your team and, and how you go about working them out. So, um, let me see here. Uh, you know, we hit up Ads and I, we hit up Orochi, the Fire Mummies. Um, last but not least, this is one of those units, again, totally not in the radar, right? Uh, recently had a change for the better, um, but still not a lot of people use it. Um, you know, Freya, the Fire Sylphid. Can you talk a little bit about what your future plans are for this particular unit? Um, double... Double attack bar boosting type teams, um, where like like you're you're doing a YOLO comp with with maybe no healer, right? And you use your Bernard to go first and boost up everybody's attack bar, and you know Freya is going to get the second turn because she'll be like around like 190 or 200 speed or whatever. Sure. And then you use her second skill to knock back everybody else's attack bars on the opponent's team by like 10% and then boost your nukers up by 20% and put them up to nuke. And then you try to blow up stuff, right? Like similar to like, say, uh, what you would do with like Bernard and Orion. Like like d double boost your nukers attack bars to, to, to make them move before like Chloe's and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I think she'd be effective to... to to work in like a double attack bar boosting team on a YOLO comp because mm -hmm. say there's like a Camilla on that team and the Camilla is just going to go bash on Freya and Freya will, will die and heal up the whole team and give you more time to do your YOLO thing. Yep. Um, that, that tornado looks sexy because it's on a two turn cooldown, you know, it and it's, um, I think it's going to be tough to use her effectively until you get that second skill skilled up. But um, one day I'm, I'm, she's probably going to end up being my next six star. And I'm going to be using her in various uh, arena offense type compositions to go up against, um, to try to YOLO clear people. And um, I also might be using her in combination with the mummies. Sure. Because um, they're all fire element. And, you know, seeing how she has the least amount of hit points, she probably will die the first and heal all the mummies up to full. And like extend the duration of of the uh the 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 counter to those those YOLO teams that can't be killed, so to speak. 
Sure. Yeah. And definitely, um, you know, for those that didn't, you know, put two and two together, um, you know, the passive, you know, every attack he does, right, the uh, decreases the enemy attack bar. So when he was talking about uh, being able to decrease and increase yours with this particular skill, it's because he hits all the enemies, um, you know, with an attack. So it's kind of like a two-way street on that one. Really, really can't, cool. Can't be resisted. Can't that be the, resisted. Right. The effect can't be resisted. That's that's one of the things that sometimes in arena you need consistency, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you, I you've no, you've noticed uh, I pro I have some monsters rune for like 100 percent accuracy. You know, is it is it the best use of substats? No, but you know that that few percentage points that I gain, you know, taking accuracy from like 80 to 100, I I like it, right? I like the consistency. Yep. And uh, that just it just seems interesting to me. I think there's a lot of uh, potential in the ability to know that beyond the shade of doubt, as long as they don't have like immunity up, you're going to reduce 10 percent of their attack bar, and the effect isn't going to be resisted. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. All righty. So let me see here. I think we kind of covered all the units that I wanted to hit up. Um, next topic we got to hit up is the upcoming uh, raid. Uh, in the developers' notes, I believe the. Um, Real-time raid and rune enchantment, so uh, definitely uh, probably one of most of the exciting updates um, to come. You know, but we all saw the video recently with regards to the the raid and how it's going to run, um, which brings us to our next point. You know, we're going to have a lot of people out there. They're going to be uh, talking about some new and innovative ways of you know fine-tuning their current units, um, or you know figuring out you know new ways of uh, of incorporating new units. So. Uh, when I was talking to Foro on the side, I was telling him that uh, I truly feel that uh, you know Comp to us has gotten in the way um, where they're whenever they decide to introduce something, they're going to be incorporating something that's going to allow you, or it's going to force you to, to you know utilize you know different units um, than than you generally do. Uh, as we know, uh, the the recent Acropolis definitely uh, forced a lot of us to try. Uh, different units and, and combinations and whatnot, but and, and of course, you know, some people got a little, you know, down and depressed about it. But you know, at the end of the day, that's the they they did the they 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 made the right move because if we were able to take our typical units that we run in in, in dragons and, and giants, you know, through it, it would have been you know almost uh, you know almost kind of sad. I mean, it's, you just want to uh, you want to you know. We got how many units? Uh, like 500 monsters or something like that out there? So many units to try. And, 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 you know, people are so focused on, you know, which one's the best or whatnot. But, you know, in all reality, there's some out there that people have no idea what's about, but they're extremely strong. So we're going to talk about um, in our next segment that we like to call Ones to Watch. And we'll talk about some of the ones that I've already shown you guys in a recent video. And then we're going to talk about some of the ones that Foro wants to talk about here. So um, I think the, the, the thing for me when I think about uh, raids and other games and, and various games and whatnot. There's a lot of things that can be done but cannot be done. And, and if we look at uh, TOA and some of the giants and and and, and some of the um, some of the big bosses out there, uh, I think TOA is probably the best example. There's they uh, the big bosses have the immunity to uh, continuous damage, sleeping, you know, um, stunning, freezing, those kind of effects. Um, but, you know, one thing that they do incorporate in TOA is the provoking and the attack bar manipulation. Now, considering that this is uh, a bigger unit or whatnot, I feel that those are going to be taken away. We won't be able to do that. But I do feel that uh, being able to utilize units that have attacks based on enemies' max HP is going to be my ones to watch. So I'm going to hit up three units. And I'll talk about each one, and then what I'll do is I'm going to let Foro maybe talk about uh, his particular rune recommendations for these ones, because I know he has a couple of these in storage he's going to probably play around with. Um, first one being is going to be Marble the Light uh, Mammoth, if I can find it. Do you see it? Am I, am I losing it here? I think he's like on the bottom row. There it is. All right, here we are. So Marble, the Light Mammoth. Um, we got ourselves, you know, obviously the first skill, being able to provoke, really, really nice when it comes to, um, you know, boss stages, whatever, that can, you know, utilize provoke. Again, I don't think it's going to be something that we're going to be able to incorporate in this particular raid boss, but I do feel that um, having skills based on um, uh, max HP is going to be nice. And his third skill is something that uh, can incorporate that. It looks like it's only... One out of the three skills, 
Um, right, this one's proportionate to his max HP, but this one is proportionate to his as well as the enemy's max HP. So, what's your particular thoughts on this unit, and uh, how would you go about reading it if you were going to recommend this one for people to use in the raid? Um, if if, if Comptuous allows those those max HP skills to work on the on the raid bosses, and my my guess would be yes, they will. Um, then you're going to be able to use him in in your front row as a tank, right? Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, he's going to be one of your nukers. Like he's going to be one of the guys that's doing the most damage because the max HP move will end up doing the most damage to the boss. Um, you know more than like all your other tunes without that max HP move would do. I I would say if you're um, intermediate type player, just stick three HP runes on them all around, right? HP, HP, HP. Um, and if you're a more advanced player, you definitely want to shoot for HP, HP, crit damage on four with good crit rate subs. Yep. Um, so the, I would, if I had them, I would rune them HP, HP, crit damage and, you know, get, get whatever crit rate I needed to get, close to 100% with like the leader skills or the buffs that I knew I was going to bring to the raid. Yeah, it's definitely strong. All right, cool. And so we're still going to stay in the light category. Again, I, I there's a, quite a few units out there, guys, that are that do have the enemy's max HP, but I'm, I'm trying to use what I feel are going to be the top units. And, and when I think about, we really don't know what, what the element is going to be on this particular unit. So picking a unit that is neutral to all elements, heck yeah, um, I think is going to be the way to go. So my next pick, uh, this is my like top two pick as far as the, the enemies versus max HP go, is going to be Lin, the light Amazon. And this is because, you know, comparison to Marble, as you guys know, uh, Marble's third skill is based on enemy's max HP, but his second skill is based on his max HP, whereas Lin um, has two skills versus one that is based on enemy's max HP. And then, of course, on the, on the third one, you can also stun it. But again, you know, you're not going to be able to stun the raid boss. So um, what's your take on this particular unit, and how would you go about ruining them if you're talking about the beginner and group and, and then, of course, the end game players? Um, she she is the boss assassin. Mm -hmm. um, like, she... There, there's no monster in this game, hands down. Um, no competition that can do the most damage to a boss. Um, I, I have her five star, like awakened and stuff, and I've, I've played around with her a lot with like runes and stuff. She's, she's amazing how, how much damage she can do to, uh, to bosses that have a lot of hit points. Like she's, she's a hoot in the water dungeon. Yep. Um, <laughs> just, it's just hilarious in the water dungeon. Um, and uh, yeah, if those max HP monsters work in in our our new raids coming up, she's she's gonna be like the tune that will net you the most damage as long as you keep her buffed and alive and stuff. Yep. Yeah, I love um, it. I would probably rune her. You know, it, depending on how much damage the boss does, you have to gauge these things, right? And sometimes, like Necropolis, pretty much has a, a hit point requirement, right? And it, it could be possible this raid has like some sort of hit point requirement, and so you might end up ruining her like with an HP rune, uh, and then and then go crit damage attack, uh, like like attack crit damage HP or something like that. Um, but if she doesn't need H, an HP rune, then just do like attack attack crit damage. Right, and so it's funny that you bring up the topic of uh, the uh, the HP on the two, you know, kind of making it more of a hybrid. So let's kind of get the uh, thing out there, if you, if you could provide insight on this. For units that have skills based on enemies max HP, um, we understand that the, the crit damage modifier is, you know, one of the bread and butters when it comes to any, looking at any particular unit when it comes to damage, but um, is having the extra attack rune um, going to be vital to... Um, you know, portraying a certain amount of damage on these units, or does it really matter because the damage is proportionate to the enemy's max HP versus your, you know, attack and this and that, and whatnot? You know, what's your take on that? The attack rune will help con con considerably. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it, it's going to work great without the attack rune. Um, you know, you, you don't want to get like the math and the piece of paper out, but basically, the, you know, it's. It's your your the multiplier of the skill, which is not based off any runes or anything. It's just the the skill multiplier, mm -hmm. um, which in this case will be like uh, two percent of the boss's max HP 
times whatever your your like attack multiplier is, or like in in Marvel's case, it's HP. Right. Um, and then that gives you like your your raw damage number, and then your your crit damage is added on after that. So, um, is it going to do great damage without high attack? Yeah. Um, but is high attack going to improve the damage? It will considerably. Good. And uh, I'm glad you put it out because I was just thinking about his Orochi. Uh, you guys remember looking at his runes or whatnot. Um, you know, one of the runes on his sixth slot, the attack one, had an absurd amount of hit points. That so I think that's what it's going to kind of be. You know, looking for that attack crit damage attack. But if you can get those crazy, crazy hit point substats and, and, and to make up for the the lack of um, you know uh, HP that you might have on a particular unit, I feel that that'll be the way to go. But again. Um, it all depends on the runes you got, so play around with it and trying to figure out, um, you know, what, what what'll make it do what it do. So, um, I'm trying to think here. My last one that was kind of my top dog when it comes to this one is is kind of the most exciting one for me because when I think about uh, when I think about one of the cool things that Com to Us has done um, with this game is made it so that anybody. Um, can really shine with a particular, you know, different particular use in all aspects of the game. So my, the, the one that sticks out the most for me is Seek, the Fire Hellhound. The first unit that we get, and who would have known that that could be <laughs> something that you use, right, in, in, like, in, in game. In, in game. In <laughs> game. You would have never thought. And so when I think about um, the units that provide um, skills based on enemy smash AP, this one was my topic in my previous video, as you guys saw. Um, and, and the reason why is because um, his passive, not a skill, but his passive um, allows you to, you know, basically be immune to whatnot, but deals uh, additional damage proportionate to the target's max HP. So every attack that he does, does some damage. And, and obviously having a, a unit that's going to provide uh, the attack power for two turns, uh, two turns um, is going to be super strong when, when trying to decrease the amount of damage that your boss does to your team. So what's oh, yeah. your thoughts on this particular unit and how would you go about setting it up for him? Um, he, he's, he's great in boss scenarios, um, especially because he's, he's not so great unless you give him a whole lot of buffs. And then like, if he's all buffed up, like crit damage, uh, or crit rate attack, um, and you, you know, you give him extra hit points and stuff. He, he can, he can be pretty decent. Um, I would probably, if I'm, if I'm going to try to use him for raids for, you know, for the upcoming raids, I'd probably do something like, um, hybrid based um it, it depends like if the boss if the boss is all attack based um you might you might be able to get by with low hit points because he's got he's got pretty decent defense whenever he's all leveled up because he's like a defense monster um but you probably do something like uh hp attack crit damage just so that he's not dying but but yet his attack is good because all his moves scale off attack right um and that's uh that's the reason why the light amazon does puts out more damage overall is because her her moves the multipliers on her skill are a little higher and her her base attack is easier to get up there um and he's a he's a two-star monster his his base attack is a little harder to get up there you got to make sure he's got all the right buffs but um the the passive works um i i built him and took him to five star and played around with him on like on boss stages and stuff and yeah he he can do pretty considerable damage to to bosses um, so I'd probably ruin him something like HP attack, crit damage or something. Enough to where he's not dying, but yet he's got good crit damage. So with with the with the raid setting, you're probably going to want to bring crit rate buff, right? Um, so you can take advantage of uh, of ruining monsters with like 70% crit rate, but yet getting them to 100% crit. Sure. Cool. Um, and again, guys, there is many, many units to discuss, but we're just talking about my top three. Now, we're going to hit up some of the units that um, Foro wants to go ahead and talk about. And the first one is definitely a very, very exciting one, to say the least. We got ourselves the Fire Assassin. There we go. Lexi? Heck, yeah. The um, I, I think everybody's going to want to bring Brand to the raid. Um just just think you you could do 15% more damage than your two buddies that are in the raid with you just by bringing a brand monster when they're not bringing a brand monster. It's pretty simple, right? Um you know, we could talk more about that, but yeah, brand is going to be one of the debuffs that you're going to want to make sure that you bring. 
um, because it's allowing you to do a consistent amount of extra damage. Everybody to do a whole bunch of extra damage, and it's really simple. Uh, that night, she's got a passive like Darian, where she she can reduce um, the the damage that everybody receives. Yeah. And uh, I think she's I think she'd be good for raids because she she's going to bring your your de- uh, th- does she have defense break on her first skill she can bring de- a little defense break yep um, brand and the passive that reduces every the damage that everybody receives by fifteen percent right um, I I can see her being really awesome for the little for the raid scenario yeah uh, and and take you know take special note if this passive works the way we intend and they have raid bosses that have some heal. kind of yeah have some kind of mechanism that can heal. Um, I think that's where it's going to play in a role. So obviously, um, it does affect every monster on the battlefield, including um, us. But uh, um, you know, it does take into consideration the boss at hand as well. So I think that's going to be very, very unique. Um, and, and again, when it comes down to you know thinking about the previous games out there and and so many you know different raid bosses that are not just based on you know how much you know different things that happen at certain percentages of the life but you know how quickly can you take it down otherwise you know something will really really happen quick um i feel that this is definitely something to um consider uh so that they don't you know heal up all the way or whatever you know whatever the case may be so uh, anything else you wanted to add on this one and is there any um rune recommendation that you wanted to uh, pitch out i just it, i don't think it matters too much whatever she needs to not die Right. Like, get, like, yeah, find out, it, find out, find out how many hit points she needs to survive, and 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 make make sure she has those hit points, right? Like, just barely, and then throw the rest in like attack and crit rate and crit damage and stuff. Speed. Yep. Um, she got crazy base speed, man. Look at that base speed. That's that base nice. speed is nuts. Yeah, for a four star unit, that is nuts. That is nuts. All right, let's see here. And the next one that a lot of us got the opportunity to collect in a way, way long ago uh, HOH is the ever so popular, maybe. But after they, this, they, everybody, <laughs> everybody breaks out all day. Yeah, we got ourselves Diaz up in this mix. What's up, man? I, I, you know, I built him a while back whenever he was in HOH, and I skilled them all up and everything, and never, never really found a good. Used to, he's a great monster. I just never really, he never really fit in with the squads I was running. Um, but I can see him being good for raids because he you know he brings heal block if you're gonna need heal block right. Um, he can also do um, defense break and um, attack down, which mm-hmm. you're gonna which you're gonna want. And then he's got the the damage reduction passive, which. Yep. You can't go wrong with kind of like um, kind of like Darian. I think would be a good monster for raids, right? Because he brings defense break and attack down and the passive. Um, DS is much the same, except for he also brings heal block in case you need heal block. Right, right, and that's what it comes down to. I know that uh, Foro and I talked a little bit about um, you know what what needs to be brought to the raid. You know, everyone's going to be like, "Oh, I need a Chloe or I need this or I need that." I think it's going to come down to um, bringing the composition that. Uh, provide you with all of the harmful effects um, that need you know to, that need to be placed on a unit to, to decrease medication, increase your damage, so on and so forth. Um, it's 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 definitely it's definitely made a, an extreme impact on the recent videos you made um, when it comes to Necropolis. Uh, nobody goes in there without the slow hit point disturb or the attack. So um, you know it's 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 extremely strong to have. Yep. All right, let me see. I think those are the units that we wanted to hit up. Is there any any of the other ones that you wanted to talk about as far as the ones to watch go? Oh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be all sorts of breakthrough ones that we don't, like we're just going to have to test out. Yep. You know? Um save save your fodders people's. Yep. Right? Like like save save your save your you know, if you if you're if you're looking to, you know, break into that content, and do really awesome. I'd say just like hold on hold on to fodder, hold on to six star and some stuff and and see see what uh, see what ends up being hot sauce and and I don't know. Yeah. I, so yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of units that that we're going to miss that I think are going to be really great in the in the raid scenario. Um, but we'll just have to see what Come to Us does and test it out and see see how it works yeah. first. But uh, there it is. So. He's calling the brand on, and the damage reduction, you know, the Darians, the Diaz's. I'm calling the 
enemies max HP. So we think those are going to be the next biggest thing when it comes to this particular raid setup. Um, yes. Yeah, buddy. All right. So next one up, we have ourselves. Um, my favorite uh, topic of today <laughs> is the epic fail. So we're going to let you go with your biggest epic fail since we did the last video, and then I'll hit you guys up with uh, mine. Oh, does it have to be Summoner's War related? No, no, no it can be anything because you know mine ain't Summoner's War related. So. <laughs> Shoot. Well, uh, when I was telling you about this, um, I make I make coffee, right? Like, you know, the world needs coffee. We need coffee. And I make coffee, but I make uh, iced coffee, um, cold, cold brew. And I have this big, giant, uh, like, gallon, large container full of um, – it. You, you just put – a big thing of coffee in it and you pour, you pour cold water over it and you just let it brew for a day and then you strain it. Yeah. It's got like a little plug on the bottom of it. And, uh, uh, the other day I went to go strain my big gallon of coffee and, and spilled it all over the kitchen mm. and spent the better part of two hours cleaning up. <laughs> wet coffee grounds that made it uh, into every little nook and cranny of the kitchen oh, possible. Oh, man. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, how's it... How can it get into the cabinets and the drawers whenever it's closed, right? All the, all the doors were closed. All the cabinets were closed. But I was cleaning coffee off of, like, pots and pans that were in the... in coffee grounds that were in the, um, the cupboard. Scrubbing the walls, right? I have white walls in the kitchen. Got all yeah. over the walls. All, all over the counter. Uh, uh, just yeah, it was just just a lot of fun. Um, greatest greatest epic fail of of recent memory. There you go, there you go. All right, so I gotta do mine up. Uh so depressing, <laughs> so depressing. So right before we got started, um, I was getting my lovely notepad that you guys see right here. Um, you know, I write my notes uh, that I get ready to talk about with regards to four o during the thing. Old um, school. Old school, right? I got it. I, obviously, you guys know I can't multitask. Whatever, I can't sit here and like, like, just memorize everything before I go on there. I gotta have my little cliff notes. Yes. My little cliff notes, right? And so, as I'm writing the notes, I'm getting ready to get up, and I sit down and I place my notepad on the uh, on the thing. But what I did was I had, as you can see right here, I had myself my pen like this, and the notepad in the hand. So I sat it down on the couch this is a suede leather couch one of those leather suede kind of couches right so oh those feel so good oh they do though right <laughs> they feel so good uh yeah buddy uh, so i i put it down and of course i didn't sit here and be smart and take uh you know put the little button in push a little button in so i can release the ink thing or whatever i sat it down and i wrote this like three inch line on the uh, on the couch. So luckily, my wife doesn't watch the educate dummy, so she won't so she won't see it, right? But she'll never know. She'll never know, right? Right? But uh, uh, yeah, that that was my epic fail. Like five minutes before we're getting ready to go on, I'm like, four oh, uh, I'm taking you off the headset. Look up Google real quick how to take this out the couch. I'm gonna run over to the <laughs> I'm gonna run over to the kitchen. That was the last thing. Did a did a mad dash to the to the ehow dot com and yeah. stuff to figure out how to clean up ink off off of the couch. That that's the world we live in. We don't know how to do anything. It's all about googling what you what you need to figure that's, that's out. That's what being an adult is about. That's what hey. I do for a living, childish. There it is. There, so so as you guys, <laughs> I mean, I make money to use Google for people. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So as you guys can see, I'm I'm leaning over. Right, I'm not getting ready to fart. Don't worry about it. I'm leaning over and I'm pulling out the rag. Okay. This rag I've been sitting on for the last 49 minutes and 3 seconds to soak up the vinegar, soapy water that is on the thing here. So, uh, it is mostly off right now. You guys obviously can't see it, but there's like this kind of um, random circular stain here. So, I need to get a little bit more soap and, and take off the, the, the circle mark with it. But, yeah, but... Uh, yeah. Hit, hit, hit it with the hit it with the hair dryer later on too, so the wife can't tell. Yeah, 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 right? definitely, definitely. So, that is my epic fail uh, for sure. I don't think that one could be beaten, uh, but <laughs> but at least for at least for some of my epic fails on the video camera on on this one, that was the biggest one here. So, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Um, did you want to go ahead and uh, dish out any shout outs uh, to the community out there? Um, let's see. Shout out to to our developers. 
and to the 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 U.S. community manners have come to us. You know, like the guys that uh, you introduced us all to, Gary, um, for for doing a good job of embracing the way that we're all family, right? The that's what makes this game cool is all of the, the people that that share content share with each other. We we grow and develop off of each other and. Uh, shout out to our developer for taking that and and like making it a part of our game culture, a part of our summoners work culture, uh, incorporating it into the game, incorporating it into their official message boards. Um, a shout out to all of the people that um, like watched my videos and then are now guildmates of mine and and help me have fun farming guild points and having really exciting uh, guild battles. Um, and then a last shout out to everybody that comes and has, has been like so much fun hanging out and, and me testing out the stream lately. Um, you know, like you talked about earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm giving the whole streaming thing on YouTube, like, you know, some test runs and, and, um, really just kind of seeing what it's about for the fir for the first couple of weeks on Sunday evenings. And man, I tell you, I would not do it. Unless if it weren't for all the people that come and hung out and chatted up and said like the funniest things like I, I, everybody that comes in the Sunday night stream, like everybody that's been there. If you're thinking about coming to the Sunday night stream, it's fun. And I thank you ahead of time just for coming to hang out. Gotcha. And so for those people that want to go ahead and, you know, check that out. Do you remember what time that you guys generally start that uh, Sunday night stream and how long does it go for? I've been kicking it up at around uh, 10 Eastern or so. You know, because because arena closes at like 1 a.m. Eastern. Right. Yeah. And so I've been kicking it up like maybe three hours before arena close and just the uh, giving people, everybody the opportunity to see what the best of the best defenses are. Right. There's no other way to see what the best of the best defenses are than to watch this silly nerd farm them, you know, like. Well, while, while he finishes in the top 30 or top 10 or whatever uh, of the arena. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to, it's going to be a regular thing, I think, uh, unless I'm on vacation or something. I'm going to kick it up around like 10 ish Eastern time and just hang out, do some arena, talk about silly stuff, have some AMA, um, have some fun. Yeah, for sure. And then uh, uh, any new or old guests that you would uh, like to, um, you know, recommend as far as calling out to bring out the video. I know that we, uh, I'm trying in the works to try to get Carol, I think from Shadowvar, um, back in the mix here, uh, actually for the first time. Um, and then, um, you know, obviously we have some other people planned from the old one, but anyone that you can think of that maybe you've recently seen kind of grow and, or you want to have them come on board. Have you ever seen that cat that does uh, fantasy gaming? Yes. Has, has he ever been on, uh, educate and dominate? He has not. He has not. No. Uh, um, I think you should showcase him, okay? Because he he's got class, man. He's just he's just a classy guy, and he's he's got a he's got a good sense of strategy for the game. Um, got a good sense of humor. I I just I like what he's doing. I like his style, and I think the the way he's the way he's been progressing. I think he's going to be one of these cats that. Uh, um, will be like, you know, one of those guys that you see in the top and that, you know, becomes pretty common as, you know, as far as like the top of the arena and clearing TOA hard and stuff like that. You know, I, th I think he, he's going to end up being a, a, a good, a cool cat. And, um, I, I kind of maybe, uh, like, like to see what he would be like on, uh, on educate and dominate. Mm, yeah. I'll see what he got done. I know that I've seen a couple of recent videos of his and he has cleared, um, different versions of TOA and TOA hard um, a few times. He's clearly cleared both versions, so he's definitely doing what he has to do to get done on the PVE side. I haven't he's, seen. He's got drive. It was like just two months ago he was asking me how to like make a TOA hard team, right? You right. know, and now he's like making videos on how to clear it, and he's clearly dominating it. Um, I uh, I like him. I like what he's got going on. Cool. 
Well, yeah, I'll see if I can bring him on board here in the future. But uh, I think that's pretty much it. You know, I'll have to, uh, you know, take this last opportunity again to thank you for coming on board and, and doing a follow-up vid. Uh, it's definitely one of the more exciting uh, YouTubers out there seeing you grow from zero to hero. Uh, doing it big as always. So thank you for the opportunity to showcase you, and good luck to you in the future. Thank you, Childish. Thank you, peoples. All right, guys. Bye. Well, thank you all for tuning in. It's your boy Childish and 409 with Childish Plays checking out. Take care, and we will see you next time, guys. We're out.